Okay, this video is going to be about loops. Uh, loops are one of the last uh, major paradigms we need to explore to really have the full set of programming utilities at our disposal. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and create a file. Uh, call it uh, loops one. Uh, JS. We're going to run these JS files with Node. Okay, so I have an empty JavaScript file. And we're going to start with the while loop. Okay, so the keyword to start a while loop is while. And you use parentheses. Inside the parentheses go, goes a Boolean expression. And then you have a code block. It's similar to a function code block. Loop. Okay, so the Boolean expression I'm going to try first is just true. So what happens in the while loop is every time before the loop code runs, this Boolean expression is checked. If it's true, the code runs again. If it's false, it skips to the end and keeps executing code after. Okay, so since we have true here, this will always evaluate to true, and so this is going to get us stuck in an infinite loop. Okay, it's a common problem that shows up in programming a lot. It's when your loop never breaks, and the program just continuously tries to run the code in the while loop. Okay, this is the code block is from left curly brace to right curly brace, and that, all the code in between there. So that's what gets executed each time through the loop. Okay, so let's run this real quick. Save the file. Go to my dev folder. There's the file I just made and we run it with node. So node loops one dot js. Loop, 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 loop. Okay, and it's really writing just a tremendous amount of those. You can't even see where it begins. It's going so fast. Okay, <clears throat> so to get an idea for how fast it's going, let's add a variable count equals zero. And then when we're in the loop, we'll do count plus plus. Okay, count plus plus is the same as saying the variable count equals count whatever it was before. plus one. It just increments it. Okay, so count starts at zero here. We're going to change the value of count to whatever count was before. And the first time through the loop, it's zero. So zero plus one. So from this point on, the variable count will hold the number one. And then we'll log that to the console. Then the next time through the loop, count is one. So we'll set the value of count and it'll be one plus one. So count will be two. As you go through, it'll be three, four, five. So count plus plus is just a shortcut for this. Hmm, cannot type. There we go. All right, so we save that and we run it. You see how fast, how big that number gets? It's, that's how fast the processor is able to process these instructions. That's how powerful the computers are. We're in you know, 700,000, 800,000, 900,000, a million. We're at a million just like that. So if you get stuck in an infinite loop in the, in the terminal, hit control C and that'll break out of the program. It exits the program. Okay? Okay. Now it's important that you, you try not to get in infinite loops uh, because 
it will take up a whole lot of processing power. Okay. So try not to run uh, infinite loops for too long. You can play around with it and, and see what happens. But so this code is bad code. You you don't want your program to run in an infinite loop for the most part. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to comment that out. Now let's make a while loop that stops after say 400,000. So while count is less than 400. Thousand. Now we're going to do the same thing. Console.log. Count. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if I don't add count plus plus, this will always be zero, and zero will always be less than 400,000, and again, we'll be stuck in an infinite loop which is what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so this is the Boolean expression. Is the, v the value stored in count, which it starts out at zero, is that less than 400,000? If it's true, this code will get executed in, in between the curly brackets. Okay, so in order to make sure that this stops at some point, I'm gonna do count plus plus. Okay, I'll save it, go over here, node, loops1.js and there's 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, done. Okay, so notice before we never got to done because the loop was infinite. Now there's a definite breaking point. So when it gets done, at the very end, count is uh, 300,000, or uh, 399, 1999 here we increment it to 400,000 this last console log logs out and says loop and then the count is 400,000 then it goes back to the top JavaScript checks this boolean expression again now count is 400,000 is 400,000 less than 400,000 no it's not so this becomes false finally for the first time since this expression in the while loop becomes false, we break out of the loop and come down and start executing, executing code again one line at a time. All right, and then we come across console.log done, right there. Okay, so there's a number of different Boolean uh, statements you can use here. So I can make this a huge number or I can make it 40 and that'll run real fast 40 just like that okay so I can also use a while loop to iterate through a list of objects so using arrays or strings <clears throat> let's do both um, we'll have a string This is some text in a string literal. We're going to make a variable i standing for index. We're going to start it at 0. While i is less than our string variable, the length of it. So strings and arrays have a special dot length property. It tells you the number, and for strings, it tells you the number of characters in the string. And for arrays, it tells you the number of items or elements in the array. Okay, so while i is less than the number of items in, in the string, the number of characters, we're going to run this loop. So we're going to make a variable character, char, and set that equal to our string. And then we're going to use access by index the square brackets on the string and use our index that we have. So i, the index, 
starts off at zero. Okay, so this is going to be take our variable string and give us the character at zero, at index zero. And then we increment i. So the next time through the loop, i will be one. Is one less than string dot length? Yes. And so character is going to equal uh, string uh, of index. Take the character of str variable, the string stored in there, take the character at index one, which is the second character. Okay, we can do a console.log before we increment i, and we can say character This is, I'm just putting a quotation mark here as part of the string. Same here. Um, so that's the character. And then the index is I. run this our first loop runs goes to 40 and then we get to done we'll add a little breaking line okay so now this is our new while loop so this is what's called iterating over the ele uh, elements a string has essentially an array of characters that make it up. And we're iterating, going one at a time over each one of those elements. Okay, so character is t at index zero. Okay, t h at index 1, i at index 2, s at index 3. So you see this is some text in a string, literal. Okay, and the period is included in the string. So there were 38 characters in the string because numbering starts at 0. So the first element, t, is index 0. The last element, the period, is at index 37, which means if you count 0, there's 38 elements, 38 characters in this string. Okay, so that's fine. Line a separator again, and we can do. <clears throat> We'll make an array this time. Variable array equals Alice, Bob, Carl, David. say we'll set our index equal to zero again now I'm reusing the variable I here since it was already declared up here with the var keyword JavaScript is already aware that it's a variable 
so I do not use the var keyword again, that will be an error. Okay, so I'm just setting it back to zero and starting over. I make a new while loop while i is less than array dot length. So this array, the length of this array is four. There's four elements one, two, three, four. So while i is less than the array dot length, we're going to say name, create a variable name is going to equal the element of the array at index i. Then we'll do console.log name. index i and then we cannot forget to i plus plus that increments i if we don't increment i this will be an infinite loop okay so alice bob carl david now if i take away the i plus plus we'll see an infinite loop and it'll never move past zero so it should say alice a whole bunch of times Alice, Alice, Alice. Remember, control C stops your program. It breaks it in the middle. Wherever it's at, it stops the program. It stops the loop. Okay, so you have to remember to increment I. Now the nice thing about this is <clears throat> quite often we're dealing with data that we don't know how many elements are in there. For example, a website where somebody adds items to their shopping cart. We have no way of knowing how many items are in this array of shopping cart items. So this is, the loop structure is very nice because regardless of how many items are in this array, I can still iterate over all of them. I don't have to know the exact number of items. So if there's more names here, I don't change any code, all I do is add items to this array and everything I want to happen are, will happen in the loop. Just automatically added all of these. Which is nice. So once I have this code, this is code reuse. This code I need to run for every single one of these items rather than write it out uh, four, five, six, seven times, I can just make a loop. And then also if I change the size of this array, it's fine. I don't have to add or delete code depending on the size of the array. Okay, so this is called iterating over an array, iterating over the elements in an array, or iterating over the characters up here, iterating over the characters of a string. Okay, and this is using the while loop. Okay, and again, you use the while keyword, parentheses, inside the parentheses, it's like an if statement, there's a Boolean expression. Okay, after your parentheses, you make a code block, similar to an if statement. That code block executes just like an if, if this is true, it executes. So this while loop is just like an if statement, except it keeps going over and over and over. When you get to the end of the code block, it checks again. An if statement won't check again. It'll just check the one time. If it's true, it'll run the block of code. If it's not, then it, it will move on to the else statement or just move on in the code. Okay. So that's while loops. Okay, let's make a uh, a new file and do for loops. Okay, a for loop 
is actually just a shorthand way of doing a while loop. A for loop allows you to declare your index. Now notice the semicolon. There's three sections. The first is a variable declaration, some expression, some JavaScript expression. Normally, you type in uh, of an index and set it to an initial value. So for variable i equals zero. Now this second part is the Boolean expression. While i is less than 100, we're going to do this block of code. But then we're going to add i++ plus plus here at the top instead of putting i++ plus plus at the bottom. Okay. So the for loop is basically a condensed version of the while loop because generally when you do a loop you're going to need these steps. Not always, but generally you're going to need to initialize some variable for an index. You're going to give it a boolean expression like you do in the while loop and then at some point you're going to have to increment that variable. Okay, so here we have console.log index i. Okay, over here, let's clear our terminal with the clear command. We're going to type node loops2.js. Okay. So notice i starts at 0, 0 is less than 100, this is the boolean expression in the middle, and notice each one of these in the, uh, in the for loop, there's three JavaScript expressions. This gets executed at the beginning, the middle one is the boolean expression used to check to see whether we continue the loop and the final JavaScript expression is done at the end of every loop before the next boolean expression is checked. Okay. So you have an initial expression, a semicolon, the boolean check, so that's a boolean expression, you have a semicolon, and then you have an expression to execute at the end of each loop. Okay. These are just a different way to do com uh, comments slash star uh, anything I type in here is a comment until uh, until I do star slash okay <clears throat> so we'll put that at the top this is just a code comment for you to uh, remember what each section of the for loop does there's three expressions and a for loop declaration. Okay, so one thing we can do also is instead of incrementing by one, we can increment by two. You can do this with a while loop as well. 
So for variable j equals uh, zero, uh, while j is less than 100, j plus plus. Instead of j plus plus, let's do j plus equals two. Okay, j plus plus is j plus equals one. So that means increment j by one. j plus equals two means increment j by two. Okay, so we'll just duplicate that line, bring it down. And so now our index is j. index i. So this one, since we're incrementing by 2, it should go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, all the way to 100, which means it should only go through the loop 50 times. See, there's our index i. It's going one at a time. Now, index j is going by 2s. Okay, so if we have an array, Something starts with an F. All right, we have an array. We can iterate through all the items in this array, just like we did with the while loop. We have an index. I'm just calling it K, because we already used I and J from above. K equals 0, while K is less than array.length so this is the boolean check each time you go through the loop and at the end of the loop we're going to increment k k plus equals one or k plus plus whichever you prefer console.log array item k we're going to log k first that's the index and then array k let's add some dividers for our console.log index k equals zero, we have the element apples in our array. At index uh, k equals one, we have bananas. k equals two, carrots. k equals three, dates. On down. All right, but I can change this. And if I want to do every other, this will skip bananas. It's going to start at k equals zero, which is apples, and then it's going to go to carrots, and then eggplants. So we run this again. Apples, carrots, eggplants. So this last expression in the for loop, there's, there's three expressions that go into a for loop declaration. 
The first one is an init initialization. It happens once before the, any of the for loop gets executed. Okay. The second one is the Boolean check to see if we continue through the loop. So this is checked right away for the first run through of the loop. And if it's true, it executes the code. In each run through of the loop, it checks this again. The last block in the for loop, the last expression, is done at the end of each code block of the loop. So if the code block runs, then at the very end, this will get executed. So we'll increment our k by 2. So let's, let's keep it at 1 to start with. And we'll come down here and um, let's try our k again. I don't think it will let me do that, but we'll try it. Okay, is less than array dot length. Okay, plus equals two. Okay, let me reuse it. <clears throat> I was concerned because the var keyword. I'm using it twice. All right, so we have apples. This is the first one where we're incrementing k by one, and we get every single element in the array, all five of them, or all six of them. The second time through, we're, we're starting at index zero and then incrementing by two. So that means we get apples, carrots, and eggplants. Apples, carrots, and eggplants. What if we want to get bananas? dates and then fruits well that's easy we just simply start at one instead of zero and we still add two so we're starting here at k index equals one and then we add two at the end of each loop okay so let me just copy this code exactly and this this time I'll use k equals one So here, this this is everything in our array. We're iterating over each item. Here, we're iterating over the even items. And here, we're iterating over the odd indexed items. OK, and I can also go through, go backwards through it if I want. OK, so let me add some uh, console.logs here. This iterates through even indexed items. Each even indexed item in the array. And this iterates through each odd indexed item in the array. Copy this, control C, control V pastes. Oops. And we're going to iterate through each item in the array backwards. Okay, so this time, let's start with an empty four. And how do we get the last item? How do we start with an index that begins at the last item in the array? So let's say var index equals array.length. But that's too long to get the last index. It's length minus 1. Okay. So this is our index. We're initializing at the beginning of the loop. And we're setting it first equal to the very last index of the length of the array. 
So to get the last index, it's array.length minus one. Now we do the Boolean check. If index, while the index is uh, greater than or equal to zero, because we're starting high, we're starting with the length, so this is going to be above zero. In this case, we have uh, <clears throat> here's our array. We have one, two, three, four, five, six items. So this is the fifth index, index five. So that's where we're starting out. And we want to go back one at a time. And zero, we still want to count. But once we go to negative one, we're done. Okay, so while the index is greater than or equal to zero, we want to run this loop. And then each time the loop runs, we decrement i. So i minus minus this time. So index. Sorry. And you have to keep track. You have to make sure you use the same variable name. And here. I have to use index now since I changed the name of it. Index. 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 There. So we started at five fruits, four eggplants, dates, carrots, bananas, apples. So we went backwards. So you can see this is very powerful. You can iterate through the list in any number of ways you want. But the, the mechanism for looping is incredibly powerful because it allows you to uh, repeat some code any number of times depending on the size of the information you get. And you don't have to know the size before you start. So that's what's very powerful about it. The user on a website can continuously add items to a cart something like that and for each item you can iterate it through and tally up how much uh, how much each item costs and have a running total a subtotal and then do the tax and stuff like that so you can iterate through an unknown amount of items okay and that allows you to conserve code so you don't have to write it out six times I just write the code one time and it executes it six times for each element in the array it executes at one time for each element in the array, a total of six. Okay, so that's the power of loops. And we're going to uh, use loops to create an animation, which is going to be fun. Um, but that's going to be in another video. But that's how all of your computer games work. There's a run loop, and it calculates the position of all the objects, all the characters, whatever's in the game. It calculates the position and then renders how that should look and then it runs through the loop and calculates the new position based on how much time has passed and the velocity of the objects and then calculates where everything should be and then it renders it on the screen so you can see it and then it goes through the loop again and it just keeps looping alright so that's how animations work and we'll go into that on one of these upcoming videos